So the project today is to replace the turbo on a 2015 Ram Cummins. So I've got it out and I don't know if that's 50% uh, of the job or not. It's not a, a fun job as I've found out. It's a pretty tedious job. But I thought I'd kind of show where my approach. So one thing is you can watch a good video by Thoroughbred Diesel on how to put in a fleece cheetah turbo. I'm not recommending that turbo by any means. I don't know anything about it. I would say always buy new turbos if you can afford it. Or good OEM turbos. I wouldn't go aftermarket or reman because they're probably not going to last as well as a OEM turbo unless you're looking for some kind of performance. Otherwise, uh, like I said, those are my recommendations. So to get this out, I've got the, the truck is jacked up and I've got a, a couple jack stands under this arm here. Make sure it doesn't uh, fall down. And uh, as you can see, I've taken the battery box out and the battery. I've got all the wiring kind of floating here. With these trucks, as they age, it's good to take the battery cables apart and uh, clean all the ends off anyway. So I don't think it's uh, that big of a deal to get the battery box out and go after all this stuff. It was kind of funny, it's like eight millimeter nuts on this side to get the battery connections off. And then like 10 millimeter on this side, it's kind of strange, you're not the same from side to side. You have to uh, swing the power steering reservoir out of the way and reach down in there to drain their coolant. This has got an aftermarket rad, it's just got like a a flat thing you can turn with your finger to drain the coolant. You do need to use the right coolant. Do some research on it or you will screw things up. There's a little note on here that can lead you partway down the path MS12106. The coolant that I've got, it's got a mix of two different kinds in here and they do not really mix. There's some orange going on or purple going on and some green in there. So when you do this job, it's worth cleaning out your uh, heater core in the back because it's going to plug up on you if it hasn't already. So I've got some a blowgun over here I've been using for that. So this OTC tool is a good way of blowing out your uh, coolant. So you're putting air through the back and then you can blow some air in as well with the trigger. The trigger is only injecting air, this controls the water. And it works, you can use a garden hose and pulse it as well. Like I have high water pressure here, it's like 90 PSI. Otherwise, if you got low water pressure, you probably need something like that to uh, make things happen. We got some turbos here. So what I've got is the 2015 turbo and a 2014 turbo I got off a guy in New York. So he upgraded his truck and he took out the uh, manifold and the turbo and everything. So I got like the Knox speed sensor stuff from him, an extra elbow. I'm kind of going through the parts and seeing what is good for me. Um, when you try to change your turbo actuator, which is really the reason why we're here today, you will find that this bolt here that's exposed on the side is a big problem. So uh, on both turbos it was seized. So on this other one here, for me to get it off, I had to drill in to the side of this uh, bolt to snap it off and then slowly kind of separate it. Like, cause it's seized from here to the bottom, it's not seized in the uh, housing necessarily, it's just the whole length of it is seized. So you have to kind of break it apart and drill it out and try to protect the turbo actuator because you can get a hundred bucks for it just as a core, whether it's uh, good or not, as long as you don't damage the thing. So that's my plan here, is to send this away. And uh, on this turbo, I found that it operates nicely. It goes through the motions. You can see there's a, 
a line there to tell you where it's supposed to go to and another line there and there's uh, in the center you can put a pin in it so to set this up I'll have to use a scan tool to uh, go through the motions so you first you have the turbo actuator hanging on the cable and you set it up and you set this in whatever position it needs to be I don't recall exactly and after that you're going to uh, put the actuator on and it'll get set up at that point so you do need to drain the coolant otherwise when you pull this uh, off of here coolant is going to pour into uh, your electronics and screw things up I found that I needed to take this hose off of the turbo the uh, guy who took this out did not need to and I think it's because he probably took the whole manifold out in one shot I'm not really sure I wasn't present I had to use map gas to heat up these nuts to release them on here and on here otherwise they were not going to come off they were going to break and this stuff is all expensive right like anything you break is a few hundred bucks so don't break anything like this hose here whoever worked on the truck previously they damaged the outside of it and uh, I'm not going to put it back on like that and you got to buy like the whole air box to replace that so and this is an the uh, crankcase drain into the uh, intake not crankcase the, the oil pickup PCV system kinda so this needs to be rated for oil I could only find a heater hose which doesn't have the right liner in it so this is not going to last but it's right by the turbo so it needs to be a heat protected right so it needs to be oil rated so I have to find a, a chunk of this or what I'll do is I'll cut it in the middle and put in a, uh, a coupling like a brass coupling so I can extend it otherwise I'm not really sure how I'm going to make this work long term you do need a uh, gasket for the back of the uh, elbow so I gotta like, chisel off this old gasket here and uh, s clip on this new one there's a uh, indicating dowel on here these are quite fragile so like I whacked this with a hammer to get it off the truck and then I had to uh, straighten it out afterwards whoever took this one off also bent the nub there pretty good and it's like off by its entire diameter by position so that's not really ideal so I'm hesitant to use that one even though it's a bit low mile for getting the uh, NOx sensor out of this elbow I tried using like an O2 sensor tool and wouldn't work it was just spreading so what I found was like just to use a, a 7 8 wrench and then slug it with a hammer that was uh, the way I could get that out and uh, to get the uh, coolant line off the bottom of the turbo you need like a, a short 7 8 or 22 millimeter to reach that so you could cut up a wrench or if you've got a stubby that's fine too it would be better if this was a straight wrench but uh, I didn't need to bend it straight would have been a little more convenient but uh, didn't have to do that I've got a, a kit here with some miscellaneous stuff you do need to get the seals for here and then the fasteners you have to replace these as well and yeah so for when you get a kit you're going to need a, a programmer you're going to need the, the base kit here and uh, the gasket for the back of the elbow and I think that is more or less it the uh, stuff I've had to buy you can get a fleece turbo drain and like uh, this thing is pretty terrible for removal this is one that came with the turbo it's actually been damaged when they yanked it out but anyway getting this out you need a uh, a quarter inch drive swivel head 10 millimeter socket this one's a gear wrench brand with a uh, six point you're gonna need that to get the uh, turbo drain off the bottom here 
and then that's the one you need the slug or sorry you use the short wrench to get off the coolant line here and like I said I had to take that off to get the turbo out and uh, so like, you have the studs on here and the stud on the manifold and I found that I couldn't get it down far enough to disengage the studs off of here with that coolant line in the back so I took it out and even then I had to keep like slamming the turbo down until it kind of clearanced its way through there's a heat shield underneath of that drain line there and that thing you will have to like find a way to bend it down as much as you can you can even get a shot of it but you'll have to fold that down quite a bit on the uh, front of the truck it helps a lot otherwise like you can't get the space I tried to lift the engine but wasn't successful so I've got my lift here I undid the the bolt down there but for whatever reason the uh, engine wouldn't lift out of the mount and I didn't want to I don't know it didn't seem like it was really even necessary in the end so maybe if you follow fleece's instructions and leave the uh, battery tray in then you need to lift the engine to get more clearance but like that engine mount is part of the engine so if you lift it you're not getting any clearance I don't really understand the premise of why uh, the guy was doing that but it he was able to get his turbo down pretty far and I can't really understand how he did that. I could just barely get it out far enough to get that uh, turbo drain out of there. And, uh, and get the turbo out. This truck's been apart a few times from what I could tell. I think it's had the heater core replaced once and the radiator replaced. And there's, I don't know, there's evidence it's been worked on. It's got like 260,000 miles on it, so it's kind of expected. So things are kind of rough. It would be kind of a good time to change this expansion tank. Eventually the uh, coolant sensor on the bottom of it's going to fail. And it's not replaceable. So at that point I'll have to replace this tank. But uh, so I'm going to run water and uh, coolant system cleaner for a while after I get this turbo back in and uh, flush out the uh, heater core a couple more times before I um, put in the proper coolant again. You can see that's where that silicone hose got damaged as part of the uh, air box system. So it's unfortunate. That was a, kind of a tough one to get off because whatever that liner is, it was sort of vulcanized to the steel. And you'll need a light for sure. Like there's the fasteners on the bottom of the uh, turbo are very hard to see. So you need a light to get an eye on them. Otherwise, you're just kind of fumbling in the dark, and it's not that easy with that swivel head. So I do recommend that. If you've got a newer truck, I think, what is it, the fifth gens, they crack their blocks. And part of the reason is, I think, because these uh, old brackets are missing when people work on these trucks. They don't put the brackets back on, and then they can have block failures. So make sure if you have that out for whatever reason, you put them back in along the fourth gens. The engines haven't been lightened as much, so probably not an issue. The um, NOx sensor, I could have left the elbow and the NOx sensor together and just kind of left them up on the brakes here, and that would have been fine. But because I'm trying to get the best parts from the other truck, that's why I've got this apart. So i got to go in and disconnect the electronics for the NOx sensor in there. And again, this is very expensive stuff. This one, with the 260,000 miles, it does not want to spin on the hub. So it, uh, it's a little bit tricky to remove. But again, you had to use a slugging wrench to get these things off. They're not that easy to get off on these trucks now that they've got some miles on them. I did take out the fender liner. It's not really a big deal. This fender liner is being shredded on this truck. I don't know, something funny going on here. And the wiring is all messed up, but 
whatever and it's got a hitch on the front but even with all that stuff it seemed pretty workable I did find a 6 inch 3 8 extension hanging out in here from some previous person that worked on the truck they lost it um, yeah I'm actually gonna take all the fender liners out of this truck when I send it in for the next oil undercoating so that they can get a uh, good shot of everything and not fake it and splay the plastic I want them to coat everything and coat inside the uh, running boards um, yeah this truck's got some issues but it's what I could afford I didn't want to take out a big loan or anything so this is what we get to do we're cheap so we get to work on our stuff and learn about it and uh, I wouldn't call it an enjoyable job though it's not that fun on this thing it's actually harder to work on than maybe my van I don't know there's way more stuff to the truck right but it's like probably got twice as many parts on it compared to an LS if not three times as many parts so I guess uh, I'll continue putting this thing together. I need to get it back together tomorrow and operational so I can use it because the brakes are blown out in the car and the Jeep right now and they're not really good to drive any distance. So I gotta have one working vehicle and I decided to do the hardest job first. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll have a recap there when I get everything back together. Well, I had to get the uh, engine hoist out again and try to get this engine lifted up and it ended up being that the engine mount saddle just kind of seized. After trying to lift the engine up uh, a half a dozen times, I actually got it to pop free. And the reason I revisited this was because I just couldn't get enough access to the oil drain uh, fasteners. So that line is pretty stiff, so it's hard to get it into position. So I was trying a bunch of different things to try and get the uh, bolts in. And it wasn't working out, so I ended up going this route. From yesterday, I would say don't try to change the uh, NOx sensor unless you really have to. There's a yellow captive uh, lock on that fastener that's kind of fragile. So like as you're pulling it out, it's sort of pushing out from the uh, device at the same time. And it's fragile. Mine kind of broke. I'm hoping it's clicked in well enough. If not, it's going to be a task to fix it because there's two like M5 screws with 8mm head fasteners in there to try to get that thing out. You can kind of see that yellow connector. And uh, with the uh, cross member on the engine for the engine frame area underneath of there, it's not easy to access. And the wires are only a few inches long, so it's a pain so I'm really hoping that I've got that in there good. I've cleaned up all the mounting surfaces and got the uh, turbo back in. I would have liked to have a couple more of the uh, banjo boat bolt washers for the kit. Like there's six of them in use on the truck and they only give you four on the kit. So that's kind of annoying. Um, when you change a uh, turbo actuator, you're supposed to use like ceramic grease. This is what I've got from uh, working on my Jeep. Uh, that's the part number there. And this is good for um, putting in fuel injectors and uh, glow plugs in the 3 liter diesel. So I recommend using something like that. I couldn't find the grease that comes in the kits without buying a large volume of grease. And because I'm using all used parts, like there's not really a, a good kit that has like everything in it, per se, because I wanted to get uh, good quality uh, gaskets for the turbo actuator. But things are kind of coming along. It's a bit of a struggle. This job is not any fun. You just do it out of necessity. Like, uh, depending on what you get paid versus what the stress you're willing to go through, it might be better off just paying someone to do this job. But it's a, like I paid 400 bucks for that turbo, and then I've got like 200 bucks in miscellaneous crap. 
So for $600, I'm doing a turbo replacement because I had a bad actuator. And uh, for me, I guess the aggravation is going to be worth it, but it's not entirely fun. Like There's better things you could do with your life than do this, but uh, it's sort of how things are going along. So I'll just give that update, and I'm hoping that we'll cut back later to uh, when we're actually setting up the actuator on the truck so we can use it. All right, so as discussed, uh, when you get the uh, turbo in, you'll have to program the actuator unless you get one that's uh, self-learning, which there are a few that are available. But uh, this route is just with a stock OEM actuator, and there's two ways. You can use Alpha OBD on a phone plus an OBD Link MX Plus, and this is good for primarily alpha products like uh, Daimler, Chrysler, whatever types of products and uh, that's sort of the route you'd go that way and uh, the other route you would go is using an Autel like a Maxisys MS906 or something like that you could use this to program the actuator as well the commands are identical in Alpha OBD is the Maxisys the uh, one benefit of the uh, MX Link Plus with the Alpha OBD is that you can make your own keys. So when I got this truck, it only had one key with it, and you need to get the uh, security number out of the computer to make more keys. Axisys can't do it. Alpha OBD with the OBD Link MX Plus can do it. So that's one way you could go, or the other way there. It's up to you what your fleet of vehicles are. I've got a mix of uh, the Chevys and the Chevy it has like an aftermarket radio so I had to use a scan tool to program the rate the keys otherwise uh, it also requires a uh, you could program it with the radio if you have an OEM radio otherwise you need to use a, a scan tool for it all right so we're gonna go the hotel rate route for uh, setting up the uh, Actuator. So number one, you have to have this fastener in before you try to mount the actuator. It cannot be put in after the fact. The turbo, I have it turned up that way where the uh, pin aligns in the hole. So that is set. I put a little bit of grease on the uh, gears and it's been sucked up in there. But uh, so basically to go in here, you go into the control unit, powertrain, ECM. You should clear your codes in advance. That could or make or break this. I've already done that. Special functions. Don't do the pre-align. It's a trick. It doesn't do anything. It won't work. We're getting grease on everything. All right, so you've got the uh, actuator off the turbo. Key is in the run position. Don't try to start your vehicle by accident. You might suck up a rag and screw everything up. All right, so we just did the pre-align just by doing that first click. Now we are going to I'm going to turn off the camera and get this thing attached to the uh, actuator and we will finish the learning. Okay, actuator is in. You do have to rock it back a little to get the gear train past the uh, gear wheel on the uh, turbo, but that worked out okay. With that fastener in there, I just have things kind of finger tight. So we're going to hit okay. So you can hear that that is operating and that was successful. Another thing you can do if you want to play around is scan for codes and you can go into the VGT and read it. That might be something you can do initially to see if your uh, VGT is dead or not. My old one was not readable 99% of the time, 
in one year of driving with a bad VGT, my check engine light went away once and I got some boost in a more controllable fashion and I held my foot to the floor long enough that it realized there was a problem and it uh, tripped out again on a code for uh, the VGT because it wasn't making boost quite as much as it ought to have. So you go down into the VGT, there's no faults which is fantastic and you can go into it you can read parts information out of it. I don't know what you would see if you had an aftermarket unit. This was 2013 6 because it's a 2014 turbo and my other truck, uh, well the truck itself is 2015 so it's mostly marked 2014 stuff. But I couldn't get in here with that one anyway. So at that point it's time to tighten down these fasteners. I guess you tighten them just enough so it doesn't leak because you don't want them too tight because they might seize in there. And then there's the one on the uh, the bottom left that that one's exposed to the elements in a wheel well, which is really intelligent. I'd like to thank everybody at Cummins and Ram Stellantis for that. But anyway, so definitely liked having the uh, battery out of here with the battery tray out rather. So I'm hopefully not repeating myself. I had to do this twice because I took the uh, fastener left it out the first time around so I'm going to repeat a few things just to make sure it's in the video. So for me I did not disconnect the uh, trans line bracket or anything in the back here. I just take took the two uh, band clamps and loosened them and uh, I left the alternator wiring okay the way it normally is so and I took out the battery bracket and uh, lifted the engine. It took a couple tries to get the engine to lift out of the uh, engine mount but eventually it did it. Having this out of here is good because you can actually like get in the wheel well and sit on here with your head in the engine bay and kind of tinker away. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but I'm hoping that my final take in this video is a success and it'll be of worth my uh, weekend to do this. Basically, I started taking this apart on uh, Friday evening, kind of like took out the plastic bits and pieces, didn't do anything on Saturday, put in uh, maybe four hours on Sunday, and uh, I kind of wish I had lifted up the engine successfully near the beginning, it would have made it easier to disconnect a few things at the bottom. And, uh, and today is Monday, and it's been quite a bit of Monday trying to put this thing back together. So my goal for yesterday was to get the turbo out and then putting the turbo in. So it, they say eight hours like for a professional who's probably never done it before. I am not a mechanic so I probably have say 12 hours into this or something and uh, it's a pain but I think it's probably worth it in the end although it's a it's a painful journey. I would not have wanted to done this in the winter. <laughs> I don't. I think I would have had this thing towed away if I had tried to do this when it was uh, below freezing. I never would have finished it. So anyway, we have things coming together, and uh, we'll take a break here and get this done. Got it back together. Checking for leaks. Nothing terrible in the first few seconds. The turbo will start to smoke because it's got oil on it from uh, priming it. Like I said earlier, I'm just going to put water in it for the time being. But it's pretty exciting. Although it's turning on the fan for some reason. Just testing it a lot. No codes yet, so we'll just do a, uh, a scan here. Sorry for the glare, it's just sort of the, the nature of touch screens. 
we got past the PCM. There's one, uh, there's something wrong with the uh, button here. I gotta figure out at some point if it really matters, I don't know. It, the BCM is the same thing, it's this auto stick. Gives some kind of an error. Don't have a lot of water in the system yet, but I do have some. The VGT. Nothing. All right. So just uh, whether you can see anything or not. I'm sorry. Implausible gear select. And uh, when I go into the BCM. The auto stick. So that's uh, pre existing codes. So let's just have a recap of this job. Need a new air filter. If you buy a new turbo, you need to put a new crankcase vent filter in. They'll want a copy of that in the uh, paperwork if you had a turbo failure. So you gotta change that. You gotta drain the coolant by going down through here. And you gotta take all the intake out and make note of missing fasteners and stuff because you're probably not the first person to work on the vehicle. This hole was stripped for me, but at least I was able to shove a long screw in it so that it doesn't fall out. Um, like I say, you'll need a way to calibrate your uh, turbo actuator. I was able to get that hose in that was damaged. It, was okay to be an inch short. Everything works out, so I'm happy about that. Lifting the engine is mandatory. In the end, to get that the turbo train bolts back in, I had a ratcheting flex head 10. This is a 7 16th 11, but anyway, I used a 10, and I was able to get it in with that. Like I had to use that. And I had to use a, uh, a pinch bar to kind of force it on. I had like, um, yeah, that pinch bar there. So it was like two feet long or something. The bolts, they're M6 by 60 for the long ones, the short ones, I don't recall what they were. I think I had bought that grease initially to for the turbo gear, but I didn't use it. I just used the... Uh, ceramic grease in the end this one's got a way better temperature range may not be the right application i had a, a bd diesel kit i still got to run the truck up to temperature and see if these seals last or not i wish i had six of the uh, banjo fasteners need that guy there because I had two turbos, I got some spare parts laying about. You need to have the anti seize. You gotta put the one bolt in the bottom of the uh, actuator and rock it in to get it in. You need a, I think this was a M5 Allen head to put those in. You have to use that to get it back in. I kind of pick through the lines and pick the, the best ones. I only used one of the O-rings. I wasn't too worried about it, despite the truck having 450,000 kilometers or 260,000 miles on it. You gotta be creative. You gotta have time. And eventually you will get through it. Having this or some means of lifting up the engine is necessary. You have a bottle jack and a big piece of wood pushing up against the uh, rail for the oil pan could work. Got to put the wheel back on. Had to use map gas for the uh, band clamps. At some point, I'm going to be putting a uh, coolant filter kit on. I was able to get one fairly inexpensively. 
we shall see if it's any good or not. It's kind of, I don't know, these trucks have so much junk in the uh, rad, or the engine block, you gotta clean them before you even use them. I got mixed uh, metric fasteners in stainless and uh, plain. Having a little hose clamp here, tool is kind of handy for the constant pressure springs. The constant pressure springs are kind of annoying, but they're better than worm gear clamps because they have constant pressure on them. They never need to be tightened. Either they're good or they're bad. So there's that. Need some extensions. You need that uh, Flex 10 to get into the uh, the back bolt up against the block for the cooler. I don't know if getting the uh, fleece turbo drain would be of any use or not like I don't know like you'd have to see it and try it again I wouldn't recommend taking out the uh, knock sensor unless you really really had to like you can leave it in the elbow and you can you don't need to remove it from the truck engine part either you just leave it on in my opinion if you do you're looking for trouble I don't know if you have to grease the gasket. I be, you have to be careful with that. You might want to do some research before greasing it. But somehow, the last little bit, it will not go on. And the connector breaks. And you don't have a positive lock on it. So I'll probably be going in there at some point and dealing with that. Like The worst case is that it leaves you stranded, which is unlikely. Or it gets all corroded and you got to take chunks of your engine harness out. And I don't want that either so that's kind of unfortunate um yeah when you've got your wheel fender wells out take a peek up in here i don't know if you can see it or not but it's starting to fail and it's through on this side so i actually have some uh i don't know if they're laramie fender flares to put on this truck so i'm going to fix it best i can and then cover it and run it like that. At some point you can put fenders on it and maybe fiberglass sides. I'm not sure if this if fiberglass sides could take the weight of this uh, cap or not because that cap I think I might got 2,000 pounds there above stock just with that and then it put another 2,000 pounds. It probably sits on the uh, bed of the truck but I'm not sure but anyway that's not really part of the video i do like to share what i know whether it's uh always useful or not I do try to share there's supposed to be a uh, protector on the bottom of the coolant bottle this thing was sitting in the engine bay when i got the truck and i can't f I, you have to hot glue it on there or something i don't know glue it on somehow with the but i've been unsuccessful in doing that but uh, no leaks or puddles. So I'll be taking this around a bit, trying to get comfortable with it. I need to make a trip on Friday and I can't have a breakdown because that'll be $1,000 to get towed. So that would be unacceptable. So <laughs> if I do all the work and end up getting towed, I guess you really haven't saved yourself any money. So let's uh, try to avoid that. So I think that's going to be the conclusion of the video. If you are working on this and you get stuck, I really can't help you any more than I already have. I've really shared as much as I can. So it's a painful job, but it's got its ups and downs. And I hope that you get through it if you start it. And uh, you just have to put in the time and the patience and the creativity to make it work. That's really all it comes down to. So thank you for watching.